Director Jairo Bustamante set out to use the horror genre to shed light on the real-world Guatemalan genocide. The plot of La Llorona is a stand-in for the genocide that took place during the Guatemalan Civil War in the 1980s. The General Enrique in the movie is a stand-in for General Ifan Rios Montt, who ruled as a dictator in the 1980s. A total of 75,000 were dead under Rios Montt. He specifically targeted children and the elderly from 1981 to 1983 and was convicted of genocide in 2013, only to have the decision overturned. The General in La Llorona follows a similar fate and comes face to face with a restless past. But Bustamante didn't want to make another traditional horror film. For Bustamante, it meant achieving a balance between fantasy and history. So I think the most problematic part was not make a traditional horror movie. The genre had to be there, but the, the reality of the story that I'm, I'm telling had to be there too. So we, we create a kind of a balance to put a little bit of horror, a, bit, a little bit of, of reality, a little bit of fantasy, and a little bit of history. In other words, a horror movie with less supernatural and more real life. He achieves this balancing act by grounding the urban legend in realism. Realism, or naturalism, attempts to represent issues truthfully. It avoids speculation and supernatural elements. Bustamante strategically balances an urban legend between fantasy and reality in order to tell his story. So let's explore how Bustamante's more subtle approach to La Llorona makes her more realistic. Earlier in the year that Bustamante's La Llorona was released, The Curse of La Llorona was also released. And it was what you would expect from a big budget horror film, an all-powerful demonic force jump scaring a family. Bustamante never pulls the trigger on a full reveal of the urban legend. He instead sprinkles La Llorona imagery throughout the film. Everything from veil, water, and weeping. And the mention of dead children. The characteristics of La Llorona are found in more nuanced ways. Bustamante strategically includes moments to keep the audience guessing. Take this window curtain scene found in both movies as an example. Tension builds in the scene from The Curse of La Llorona and ends in a jump scare. In a similar scene, Bustamante only hints of La Llorona. He keeps the tension high, but never reveals her, and keeps the viewer in anticipation. We hear faint cries and some confusion from the general. We only feel her presence. This scene helps communicate La Llorona without it being a distraction. One is not necessarily better than the other. They both have their time and place. One is a fright fest and the other a slow burn. But for Bustamante, toning down on the fantastical meant he can highlight real life atrocities and their stories. Another great moment of characterization of the urban legend is the early testifying scene. We understand La Llorona not through supernatural means, but rather through a historical reality. Yo no me di ni cuenta. Cuando vi el fuego, agarré a mis hijos y salí corriendo. Bustamante reveals in an interview that the actress in this scene requested to change certain lines. Lines that would have coincided closely with the horror she faced. It was a very, very complicated scene because we were working with real feelings and with real people. When I started working with, with her, she, she asked me, can I change some little lines in the script? because that you wrote, it's so similar to my life. And, and when she proposed me how she wanted to tell the story, and she made it with this kind of rhythm, you know, a rhythm, like a ceremonial rhythm. The ominous tone, coupled with the harrowing story and veil imagery, communicate a subtle La Llorona, but a La Llorona that is backed by historical realities. The crowd itself also characterizes the urban legend. Mejor entremos. 
when the general and his family return home, they are terrorized by the families of the deceased. They become violent, they keep them trapped in their home, and they chant. They chant to the point of madness and represent a restless past for real life crimes. And then we have the character of Alma. She is the biggest portrayal of La Llorona in the movie, with her long black hair and her association with water and water imagery. Scenes in the movie have her seemingly revealed as La Llorona, but it never comes. Bustamante never reveals Alma to be La Llorona. Rather than focusing on a monster, Bustamante shifts focus to an unresolved past, both in the film and in real life. Bustamante's La Llorona is not an unexplained demonic force that is defeated with holy water. She is the indigenous victims and their families. She is the paranoia and distrust. She is a restless past that craves revenge and justice. She is less supernatural and more so the consequences of real crimes that went unpunished. If you like this type of content, be sure to like, share, and subscribe.